Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can connect up your old games consoles like this PS2 and this Nintendo GameCube to a monitor that doesn't have AV composite inputs or possibly a new TV because some of the new TVs are not shipping now with the composite inputs because it's kind of getting to be an old technology. So it's really easy to do. What you need to do is you need to convert it from an analog signal to a digital signal. So a cable won't do this. We actually have to have something to convert it. So what you do is you have to get a little composite to HDMI converter such as this one here. Now they're not expensive. I got this one off Amazon for just under 10 UK pounds. And as you can see here, it says input and you've got the yellow, white and red, the composite and on the output we've got an HDMI and then we also have a little switch here that says 720p or 1080p now remember this is upscaling it but you're only going to get the same quality that the actual console can output because if you were to plug this lead here into your TV your TV upscales it anyway to the definition that your TV is whether that be 720, 1080 or 4K so this isn't going to make the picture any better, but what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to keep using your games consoles. Now, there is other options. With the Nintendo GameCube over here, you can get a component cable. Again, the monitor's not going to have component, but a component cable's really expensive because it's so rare. The PS2, yeah, you can get a lot cheaper cables. You can get a component cable for a few pounds, and you can also get a PS2 to HDMI little converter for about £10, which is about the same price as this. So you need to make sure you get the right one. If you have a look here, you see input here and output HDMI. Make sure you don't get this one over here, which is input HDMI and output composite. You need to make sure you get the right one because the input is going to be from the games console and it's outputting towards the TV. So really easy to use. You will have to connect it to a power supply, but in the box they give you a little power supply and all you need to do is a little USB power supply. So if you're going to be plugging this in on a new TV, you can just use one of the USB ports on your TV. But in this instance I'm plugging it into the monitor and the back of this monitor doesn't have any USB ports. All it has is VGA, DVI and HDMI. So in this video today I'm going to be showing you it working on these two. But again you can get converters that will convert composite to VGA. Right, so all we need to do is plug in the little USB power supply that came with it. It's a standard USB to a mini USB, not a micro, a mini. You just plug that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an old phone charger. It's a 5 volt charger. You probably already have these lying around the house. You don't need to really even worry about what amps it puts out because this thing is not going to use up a lot of energy at all. So we just need to plug that into a power supply. And then let's start with the GameCube over here. What we're going to be doing is you just plug the GameCube in to this end here. So yellow to yellow, that's going to be the picture. And we've got the left audio, which is the white cable, and the right audio, which is the red cable. That's that bit done there. Now, so that's already now converted it over to digital. We just now need to get our HDMI cable, or you can get HDMI to DVI, depending on what you want. So that would be... HDMI to HDMI, or it will also work, which I will show you in the video, HDMI to DVI. So let's just start with HDMI to HDMI. So that goes in there like so, and then we're going to plug this into the back of our monitor, like so. And now we'll turn our GameCube on. And there you go, you can see that the picture's come up and the picture will be absolutely fine. Like I said earlier, don't expect it to look much better than the composite. It might look a little bit better, but don't expect miracles out of it. You're not suddenly going to get a high definition picture. Okay, so while that's just loading up there, that's the HDMI to HDMI. Let me just show you now the HDMI to DVI. That's this lead again. Again, you don't need to spend a fortune on these leads because 
Remember, it's a digital signal, so if it's going to work, it's going to work as well as a £100 cable. So if you get a £2 or £3 cable, although it's not going to be made as well as a really expensive cable, the picture quality will actually be the same because now this box has turned it over to digital. Beforehand, when it was the composite all the way into the TV, the cable did make a difference because it was analog. But now that we've gone to digital, it doesn't actually make a difference. Yes, the cable will look nicer, feel nicer and be better quality if it's more expensive, but the picture-wise will be exactly the same. So don't think that because you've got a £50 cable that you're going to get a bit better picture on your equipment. Right, now we just have to change the input again because remember now we've gone over to DVI. And there we go, it's working again. And if you switch it between 1080 and 720, it doesn't actually make a difference to the picture quality. There we go, so that's 720. And 1080. Now, as you may have noticed, now that we've gone over to DVI, we've no longer got sound. So with the HDMI to HDMI, it was fine. We had picture and sound. But when we go HDMI to DVI, we no longer have sound. Now, obviously, this is a problem. But if your monitor only has a DVI input, there is still ways around that you can get sound out of it. So this particular monitor does have speakers built into it. So what I can do is, if you have a look at this converter here, Believe it or not, the picture is only going down this yellow cable here, this thin little cable. We can unplug the right audio and the left audio and the picture will remain up there. Obviously, if I was to unplug the picture there, it's going to go from the monitor. But that means now we've got a way of getting the sound out via these leads here. So what we can do is, let's say now I've got speakers already built in to the monitor and I want to connect it up to that we can just get ourselves one of these little adapters here. These kind of adapters you can get for a couple of pounds on places like Amazon and eBay. This is a 3.5 millimeter male to RCA, or you might know them as Phono female. So two female RCA sockets to a 3.5 millimeter male. And all we need to do is plug one of them into there, and the other one into there, and then we've got a little 3.5 millimeter extension cable here male to female so I'm going to plug the female into this bit here so now we're going to have sound on this cable here so what I can do is I can plug this in to the audio input on the back of my monitor so if you have a look here I've got a little audio input here so I can plug it in there and there you go straight away you hear the sound yeah so that's one way of doing it. Or let's say if you wanted just to connect your headphones straight up to it. So I've got my wired headphones here. Now it's only gonna work for sound. You're not gonna be able to use it with the microphone. But if you wanna plug your headphones in, again, what you can just do is unplug this from here and get yourself a little 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter coupler. Plug that in there like so and then plug this in. You might well be able, I haven't checked, you might well be able to get two RCA Phono to a female adapter. Then it saves you having to convert it from male to female. So you probably can get them, but this is just what I had lying around the house. So I'm then going to plug that into there, and then I will have the sound coming through here. Okay, so there is ways to get sound out of it. Now, just to make the video simple again, I'm going to go back to HDMI to HDMI. Okay, so that's the GameCube setup. Now, let's say if we want to set up the PlayStation 2. The process is exactly the same. All we have to do is unplug these leads from the GameCube and then plug in the leads from the PlayStation. There we go. And I'm going to show you a way now that you can, what you can do if you don't want to keep unplugging everything. So it's fine at the moment. If you've only got the one piece of equipment, you would just leave it like this. But let's say now if I have two pieces of equipment like I've got here, then what you can do is you can get these little adapters that are just male RCA 
to two female RCAs. And if we plug three of these in to the little converter down there, it will then give us two lots of outlets that we can then put both game systems into at the same time. Now if both game systems are on, the signal's gonna be combined and you won't be able to make it out. But when you turn one of your games consoles off, then the signal will just be able to be visible from the one that's left on. So this is an option. So let me just show you this working. So we're just going to plug it in there like so. You just need to remember to get all the leads in the right way. So at the moment you can see now that's the PlayStation plugged in and it's working. But when I now plug in the GameCube, can you see now the signals are combined and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work. But if I was just to turn off the GameCube, then the signal is going to come back through to the PlayStation here. Right, so as you can have a look there, you can see that the PlayStation 2 is working fine. Picture is as you would expect. Okay, so let's say we want to exit the PlayStation 2 now and we want to play the GameCube. We don't want to disconnect any cables or anything. So I'm just going to exit this. Right, and now you can see it says no signal. PlayStation's off. The cables are still all connected. And all we have to do is turn the GameCube back on and then it will switch over to the GameCube. There we go, so that's the GameCube working again. So as you can see, the adapters are really simple to use and they're nice and cheap. And they're adequate for what they do. Obviously, if you were to have top-end equipment, then you would probably want to get a better converter than one of these £10 Amazon or eBay ones. But for games consoles, they work absolutely fine. And the picture is as you would expect from a composite cable. I forgot to mention earlier in the video that if you were just using something like the PlayStation 2, because it's got built-in USB ports, then you don't actually need this little adapter here, the power adapter, you can just unplug it from there and you can just plug it straight into one of the USB ports. And then that's gonna be enough to power this device here. There we go. Now obviously this is not an option on the GameCube because it doesn't have any USB ports. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.